Hey there beautiful souls, happy new year to you. I'm really excited to be delivering the very first video or Facebook Live uh, for 2021 and can't wait to see you guys. Um, so today's message that I want to share with you guys is coming back again to relationships as we know but it's all about empowering you and it's particularly for you guys who uh, find that you feel like a sense of disappointment or maybe you feel like you get let down a lot in your relationships or with the people around you. So I'm talking all relationships, particularly those that are really close to you. Um, I want you to really think about how much, uh, yeah, you experience a disappointment or feeling like those around you let you down. Uh, and uh, I want you to kind of put yourself in the driver's seat with this as well, because a lot of times how this comes out is we end up testing people. All right. And I'm going to dive into a bunch of this with you guys today. Hey, Dennis. Hey, superstar. Love it. Um, now, um, I'd love for you guys to share this message if you find it of value. For some reason, Facebook isn't letting me do a lot of um, content sharing into different places. So hopefully you guys uh, find some value in today's message and give it a share. Um, so that other people can get uh, access to this content. Um, and hey to you, Jose. Good to see you guys joining live. So today I want to talk to you about something really simple yet profound that can empower you in all areas of your life in any dealing with other people. So today's message is you expect from others what you do not give yourself. OK, and I want to talk about expectations leading to disappointment, feeling let down. All right. Uh, we all know what Tony Robbins would say in this realm, which is, you know, when you trade your expectations for appreciations, your whole world changes. But I want to talk about why do we place so many expectations on those around us? Right. Because remember, when you expect anything from external sources, you're not in control of that, right? So you're placing the power of your own fulfillment and satisfaction in the hands of those that you're placing the expectations on. And so when we have a lot of expectations placed in external sources that aren't in our control as to whether they're going to follow through or not and deliver on that expectation, what we're doing is we're simultaneously setting ourselves up for disappointment, for feeling let down, right? We're creating the rule out there as to what is going to allow us to feel like satisfied or disappointed. And uh, and basically all of these messages are for, you know, these reminders to each and every one of us to actually place the burden of responsibility of our own fulfillment and control over our own lives into our own hands, right? Rather than throwing them out or handballing that responsibility to anybody externally from us. And so I want to ask you, are you somebody who has found yourself feeling you know, a lot of disappointment. Maybe you feel constantly disappointed by the people around you. Maybe you feel like they let, let you down all the time. You know, you can't rely on them to, you know, fulfill on your, your own fulfillment, right? Or maybe you feel like in your outside connections that you feel really unseen or unloved or uncared for. And maybe this leads to you may be doing a lot of testing. Now, what do I mean by testing? I mean, whenever we do not directly communicate about what our needs are, and instead we end up falling into the trap of expecting everybody around us to be mind readers, right? And to deliver on our needs, even though we actually haven't spoken or communicated about them. And what we do is we set people up in our external world to test whether they will follow through and make us feel loved or cared about or seen or heard or whatever our particular flavor of um, wanting that validation is, right? And so, we set these unspoken kind of social contracts, expectations uh, to those around us, and it's completely unknown to them, right? Unbeknownst to them, you know, we are judging 
how they're showing up and we're making meanings around how they show up um, as to we're directing that as to how much they love us or care about us right and so what happens is all of these expectations that we place upon others is really what we want to look at right we want to do as tony robbins would say which is trade our expectations for appreciation so our whole world can change meaning our whole experience and the meanings that we create right but what drives us to create expectations that we either directly communicate about to these other people or we indirectly do by testing people, right? And placing these um, situations or contexts to uh, happen so that we can test whether, oh, are they gonna actually, uh, you know, meet my need here or, or not, right? Uh, whether it's indirect or direct, expectations always lead to disappointments, all right? Or a lack of appreciation because somebody met your expectation but you expected them to anyway, so you don't really have any gratitude for it, right? Like, they, so they should have met your expectation. So it just, it's either we stay the same, right? Or we feel worse. That's what expectations do to us. Because if somebody else fulfills on the expectation, so they should have, right? So we don't feel any better off for it. Uh, or we feel if they don't um, meet the expectation, we feel disappointed, right? So we're setting ourselves up to lose and we're certainly setting up our relationship dynamics to lose. And so what we want to do is then look at why, what's the driving force for me even setting the expectations, right? We're going a level deeper. We're not just going to stay up here on the surface and go, oh yeah, okay, I have had these expectations and so I'm just going to swap them for appreciations. Good luck with that, right? Like that's that relies on your willpower because you're treating the symptom of the expectation and you're trying to swap it for an appreciation, but you're not actually treating the cause. And so what we want to do is look at what drives us to set these expectations in the first place. And that's what today's message is all about. You know, you expect from others what you do not give to yourself. Okay, so what that really says is there's some sort of void within, right? You're not taking care of the needs within yourself. Instead, you're projecting an expectation onto those around you for, to fulfill on that need for you. All right. And that's why we expect from others. Now, an expectation is you better do this or else I'll make it mean this and it won't be good for both of us. Right. And so there's a lot of an emotional charge. There's a neediness behind all expectations. And that neediness behind the expectation is driven by the fact that you, you do not provide for yourself in that way. So look at some examples on that, right? Look at and question, where is it in my life that I expect others to do something for me and I end up feeling disappointed, right? And basically what we want to do is go, okay, well, what is that expectation, right? Like, for instance, I've heard so many people share this same thing, right? Like over the Christmas and New Year's break. There's been a lot of people that I've communicated with who have been like, you know what? Every year, they say this, every year I reach out to these friends of mine, these family members in my life or whatever, and I'm the one who instigates, you know, the happy new year or the happy Merry Christmas, right? And they say, I've heard just so many other people saying this, that's why I'm sharing this example. But then they say, oh, well, this year, you know what? I didn't do that. And you know what? Nobody sent me a message, right? This is just a funny example. But what is that saying, right? What that's really saying is, I'm testing these people in my life to show me whether they care about me, whether I'm important enough, whether I'm significant enough in their lives, that they're going to reach out to me. I'm, I'm testing that avenue in order to prove to myself uh, whether or not they care enough about, them, about me or make me important enough in their lives. Now, why we have an expectation and then if they don't fulfill on the expectation, we make it mean something negative is because of what we're talking about today. What we expect from others is what we do not give to ourselves. So what we do, like this is the empowered pathway, right? Identifying the expectation uh, that leads to disappointment when people don't meet it. 
and then identifying what specifically am I looking for in that interaction, in this example, to feel important in other people's lives, right? And then what we then do to be an empowered person who doesn't feel victimized by the people in our own life that we're not having a direct conversation with, right? They could have any number of things going on in their lives, right? And instead, we're creating this poor meaning like, I'm just not important to them, right? I'm not uh, good enough in their eyes, right? They don't care about me. Instead, what we're doing is we're going deeper into this under the surface and we're taking back the, the control of our lives. We're becoming the creators rather than the victims in all scenarios of our lives. So in that particular example, you know, that I'm making it mean that they don't think that I'm important and I want them, I'm expecting them to make me feel important in their lives, right? What that really leads to, again, is what I'm not giving to myself is what I'm expecting to others. So am I? Well, how can I make myself feel more important to myself in my own life? All right. So this is not a simple, easy, uh, like it's simple, but it's not like easy. It takes some work, right? And that's why most people want to handball the responsibility of their fulfillment to other people, put the expectations on others. So it's others failing at making me happy rather than myself failing myself, right? We all want to avoid, uh, you know, feeling like it's our responsibility. It's our failure, right? And so this is something, this is a process for people who want to really be empowered. And I, I trust that you guys who watch a video like this are that quality of people, right? And so it might take a little bit of effort, right? And you take on the responsibility. You can't blame anybody else when you don't feel important in this scenario, right? Um, but when you do this, you become a free individual, right? Everybody wants freedom. Who doesn't want to feel free? Why wouldn't you want to feel like you control how you feel in your life rather than, well, I'll set this little test up. If they meet the expectation, I'll be no better off. So they should have. If they don't meet it, I'm going to be disappointed, feel let down, right? Feel victimized. And instead, we want to swap that to, hey, I want to be an empowered individual. I notice this pattern. I see myself, you know, um, expecting things from other people, feeling let down, feeling disappointed, blaming others for my, um, you know, unhappiness or whatever it might be. And instead, you know what? I want to be the kind of person who is empowered, who doesn't need anybody to act or operate in any particular way for me to feel okay, all right, or to feel great. And so what I want to do is I want to look below the surface of that pattern of behavior, right, not being direct, expecting things from other people, and instead of just doing what people might say, oh, just get rid of your expectations, swap them for appreciation, that is being just relying on willpower. I want to go below that because I want to eradicate my life of all dis disempowering patterns. And so I want to go the step deeper. I want to look at what's causing me to have these expectations of other people that I that my happiness and satisfaction is directly tied to. And I'm going to look below the surface and I'm going to identify exactly what I'm expecting, exactly what I'm feeling I want them to make me feel like in their lives. And then I'm going to allow that to shine the light on my own personal growth pathway. Right? And that is how you not only give yourself the greatest gift of empowerment, of self-direction, of becoming the creator in your own life, uh, and, you know, being able to, uh, when you're not feeling great, know how to meet those needs again, uh, instead of, you know, putting the burden of responsibility out there and, you know, not being able to control uh, or feeling out of control in terms of your own emotional states because you've put all the power into the hands of other people to meet the expectations that you've set either directly or in most more than likely indirectly. Okay. And so when you have the power to identify your own patterns, to understand yourself at a deeper level, you put yourself in the driver's seat to direct the course of your life from that place. And what happens as a result is that you don't only just create a phenomenal connection with yourself and become somebody who can fulfill on your own needs and is not reliant on any external source to make you a happy, fulfilled human being. 
you also now put yourself in a position where you actually get to create real connection and intimacy with those around you, right? Because the most repelling person that walks the face of the planet is one who cannot meet their own needs and is constantly trying to get something uh, from those around them, right? Like they're totally unhappy unless you fulfill the expectation for them. So that, that means that when you're around somebody like that, it's very repelling because you're not accepted for who you are and you don't only have the respons human responsibility to make sure that you're a fulfilled human being, now you're taking on the responsibility of somebody else who won't take responsibility for their own life. It's not attractive, right? And uh, even if we don't have the language for it, we as human beings... Uh, tend to be quite repelled by that neediness, right? And so if you want to attract high quality, amazing human beings that you can genuinely have great connection with and a phenomenal relationship with in whatever realm that is, you want to realize that just as you can repel people with your neediness and your expectations, you can attract and magnetize high quality, healthy people by being a high quality, healthy human being for yourself, right? Who meets and fulfills on your own needs. You do the work so that you get to show up um, as a human being who's not just there to get something from somebody else, but you're actually there to co-create and expand uh, in every dynamic that you show up in. Okay, so I really hope that what I'm sharing with you guys today is of value Get your thinking about where in my life am I feeling really disappointed, let down by those around me. And instead of feeling victimized, you get empowered by going deeper than just swapping expectations for appreciations. You want to know what's driving you to place expectations on others. Remember that every expectation, it's like, hey, you better meet this so that I can feel this. Okay, so you're not taking control of your own life and your own fulfillment. You're outsourcing that responsibility of your fulfillment to those people who have to meet those unspoken or spoken expectations. And instead of doing that, what you're doing is you're now utilizing it to really shine light on your own unique pathway for growth by identifying the exact expectations and what you're expecting as a result, what that's going to mean if somebody met that expectation, you know, what's that going to prove to you that you're not fulfilling and clarifying within. So remember, what you expect from others is what you are not giving to yourself. And that void is one in which you can only fulfill for yourself, right? So to run around outside and just have all these expectations with all these different people and then you just keep getting let down and disappointed, you know, you're never going to win that game, right? There's always going to be the next expectation and the next and the next and with these people and that person and whoever. And instead, what you want to do is go, you know what? All of my satisfaction in my life resides from within. I meet my own needs because I'm clear on what they are and I deliver on them for myself. And then I get to show up as a human being who's there to give and overflow rather than take um, something to fulfill voids that only I can truly fulfill from within. That's my message for you guys. If it's of value to you, please do share it. That's such a gift that you guys can give to me. And I love you for it. Um, and I definitely want to check in with you guys, see who's been able to join. So drop me a comment. Let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. Um, I'd love to hear your words of wisdom or your questions, uh, anything that you'd love to share. Uh, so let me dive in. I've got Paul and Alps and Dennis, superstar in the house, and Sergio and Jose. Hello to you and Yon. And uh, Yon, Happy New Year, Vanessa, and all the good people out there. Uh, be and live your life authentically and find your purpose. Live it. I love that. And so beautifully said, Yon. And very Happy New Year coming right back at you. And uh, Chandra is here. And uh, Dennis, finding that you might be a little bit guilty in this one, like all of us, right? There's, there's always, there is... Every single one of us has engaged in this process 
of putting expectations externally from us because we're not fulfilled from within. We're not meeting our needs in, within, right? It's a part of our evolution and our growth and our development, right? We've all been there. We've all done that. But if you're someone listening to a message like this, I take it that you're somebody who also loves to grow and you want to be the creator rather than the victim in your life and in your relationships, all right? So um, it's awesome to own it. That's the first step. If you don't have the self-awareness, you, you won't ever transform the pattern, all right? So love your courage there, Dennis. And Ariane is here and Elf and David and Yon. Um, what if they exceed your expectation and it leads to that relationship for uh, you long for? Oh, stranger things have happened. Faith and attraction in who you are. Be the friend you'd like to have, right? Absolutely. And, you know, exactly. So I would say the, the less expectations you have, right? We've all heard that, you know, then you know, the, the happier you're going to be, the more fulfilled. If you're not expecting something to be a certain way, then absolutely. But if your expectations, you know, if they exceed them, well, all the better for it, you know, but you've got to, like the purpose of today's message is to look at where you are placing expectations and then to question as to whether those expectations are really trying to cover up for a void that you're not fulfilling for yourself within right? Like if you're, you have an expectation that they must meet that will prove that you're a valuable, worthy, lovable human being of some sort, right? And there's, um, there's emotional charge connected to that. Then, you know, you want to look at that because you don't want to put that power outside of yourself. You want to go, okay, how can I instill within myself that I'm a worthy, valuable, uh, lovable human being? How can I do that for myself so that I'm not coming to this expectation, this relationship with an expectation, um, whether that's exceeded or not reached, right? Um, I'm actually empowering myself so that I'm not trying to get something from the external world. And if we have our expectations exceeded, well, that's great, you know, and that's valuable and you want to hold on to those amazing human beings, right? And, uh, but yeah, the, the topic for today is really just looking at, look at those expectations realistically, even if they're exceeded or not met and look at what's driving that expectation in terms of what you're not giving to yourself. Love it. Awesome. Awesome question, Yon. Love having you here as usual. And Shah's here and Don and Jose, uh, much like emotional dependency. Absolutely. Totally. A lot of codependence is connected uh, to what we're talking about today. Um, and, you know, it's funny, uh, this message in particular has come to light for me because I actually was going through um, my phone yesterday, just so I couldn't get to sleep, right? And I was going through um, some old voice messages and it was really interesting to me because I came across this old voice message back from 2015 and I was actually in Barcelona at the time and I was recording a fight that I was having with my partner. I don't know if you guys have ever done this before, um, but basically I did it at different times because you know when you're emotionally charged and connected to something, you're in a fight, right? And you feel self-righteous, but when you're so in those emo those heightened emotions, you can't tell whether you're, you know, uh, you're right or you're wrong, right? Or you're on path or you're feeling empowered or you're doing the right thing or you're not. And it was so interesting for me to re-listen to this, I think it was like 10 minutes of like an argument that I was having with a partner and, um, and to just see, you know, back where I was at that time and the expectations that I had on my partner and his expectations on me. It was so interesting uh, to have captured that moment in time. Uh, you know, being, I was traveling at the time, I was in Barcelona and to yeah have this, I, I remember I was transported back to that moment, how I felt and how much of what I was feeling was connected to whether he was meeting my expectations or not. And just the same, it, whether I was meeting his expectations or not. And because we were so self-focused, right? We were so both just trying to get the other one to meet our expectations. We completely missed and negated the love and the connection that could have been, right? And 
Um, it was just, yeah, it was really interesting for me to go back in time and, and listen to that. I don't know, most of us don't catch a moments like that, but I've got a few. And it's very um, in, interesting to go back and see how codependent you might have been. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't say that I've made it. I'm definitely still on the journey, but it's very interesting to have that sort of thing to push off against. And exactly like you're saying, Jose, uh, emotional dependency is why is a huge reason why we set those expectations on others. And if we want to empower ourselves, we want to actually, uh, you know, depend upon ourselves to meet our own emotional needs, right? Rather than it's another person has to change or meet something, uh, whether spoken or unspoken, in order for us to feel okay, which is crazy, but part of the journey. So love that share, Jose, thank you. And uh, Nicole is here and Graham and Bank. Happy New Year to you too, my friend. And much love to you, Bill, as always. And Safi's here and much love to you, Nicole. And Sanford's in the house and Nadia and Jose, thank you. It was very helpful. I'm so grateful to hear that. Thank you so much for letting me know. And like I said, if it's a, if it's a value, please do share it. And uh, Graham, Happy New Year, Vanessa. A deep start to 2021 with this message. Grateful that you're here, my friend. And yeah, I'm excited. First Facebook Live of 2021. Hope it's of value to you guys. I've got so much in store for you guys. Um, so I'm feeling good about 2021, despite all the craziness across the globe. Um, and Jake Ashan, um, very intense message. Hope that it hit you in the heart, my friend, and added a lot of value. Uh, live and let, simple, live and let live, totally. And we can't live and let live or give people what we all want, which is just to be accepted for who we are and loved for who we are, right? We don't want people around us, uh, you know, telling us what we're doing wrong or, you know, making us not feel good enough because we're already doing enough of that within, you know, that's part of the human experience. But you cannot let and let live, right? Um, you know, um, until live and let live, sorry, until you're meeting your own needs, because previous to that, you're placing these expectations, you're needily trying to get your own needs met uh, from those external sources. So you you have to, you need them to be a certain way. Right. And so that's the self-fulfilling prophecy of disconnection and disappointment is your expectations because you're not fulfilling on your own needs. And oftentimes we're attracting our reciprocal. So just like in this voice message that I have recorded uh, from 2015, an argument that I was having with my partner at the time, it was just both of us having such expectations on one another and, you know, it, making each other feel totally unaccepted as who we are, totally unloved and completely negating what we were wanting, right? Just creating a hell of a lot of disappointment, let down and moving us further and further away from love, right? So I know in my heart of hearts that every single one of us as human beings, at the end of the day, whether you're consciously conscious of it or not, whether you're courageous enough to admit it or not, everything that we do is to get to a place that we can fully love and we can fully be loved and accepted, right? And so if we know that deep down about every human being, we can actually get beyond the surface level, you know, emotional dependency, like you mentioned, Jose, uh, the codependence, we can get beyond that. And we can actually stop blocking each other from love. And we can actually break through that wall and get to that deeper place. All right. So Love that share, Jake Ashan. And Alps are very true. Love yourself and your needs within. Absolutely. But the challenge is most of us don't know what the hell our needs are because we're not questioning it. We're not looking at our expectations from other people. We're not, we're just thinking everybody around us is not doing the right thing, right? We're blaming them to save ourselves unconsciously from, you know, realizing that we're the ones failing our own selves and our own fulfillment. And so, a lot of the work that I do is to help people identify and clarify what their actual needs are and how to fulfill on them for themselves so that they can show up in the world, not, you know, at the whim and the mercy of other people doing or not doing things and actually from an empowered place, a loving place, which leads them to that purpose of all human beings, the ability and the capacity to love 
others at your highest degree and love and be loved yourself. All right. So love that Alps and uh, Jose within. Yes, absolutely. And Tammy, hi, have a wonderful new year. Thank you, beautiful soul. And loving that this is very true for you. And uh, happy new year to you as well. And Brian's in the house and Cindy, um, what's the best thing to happen in the new year? Oh, okay. Um, Cindy, you know what? I think it's just for me personally, I would say just more self-empowerment, right? That's why we do, I deliver messages like these to you guys, because I feel like there's no greater gift that you can give to yourself than self-awareness and the ability to transform, which is self-empowerment, right? Because with self-empowerment comes freedom. And like I just mentioned, we get closer and closer to living on purpose, which is to love fully and be loved fully, right? And that's what creates fulfillment in our lives. So hope that answered it for you. Um, plenty of amazing, uh, more surface level stuff kind of happening. But at the end of the day, we go deep in these messages. So that was kind of a deep one for you. I love it. And uh, Wendy's here as well. And Simone and Jan, I'm loving that this is spot on for you. And uh, Simone is from Sel Salisbury. Awesome to have you here. And uh, AJ, hello to you, my friend. And Graham, Barcelona is a beautiful city, though. It is a beautiful city. Um, and But you know what? To be honest with you, most of my memories from that time in Barcelona, um, yeah, so in 2015 was uh, really when I decided with my partner at the time we were going to go live the laptop lifestyle, right, and travel around the UK and Europe. And we did that for about 10 months. And it looked all beautiful, but gosh, was it challenging. Like the fights and the arguments and the codependency and the growth, right, that all took place during that time was amazing. And I'm really grateful to my past self who did record some different elements of that so that I, as my own self, can go back and I can reflect and I can see, you know, what was my pattern? Is my pattern still at play? How could I shift and change that? Because like I said, self-awareness is the greatest gift that you can give to yourself through, um, you know, that self empowerment through self awareness and the ability to transform. Uh, so I love that. Thanks, Graham and Allison and Helen and Wendy. Happy 2021 to you as well, beautiful soul. Much love coming right back at you. And Sheba and Reed are here, and Joe and Alex and Jose. What is meant to be for you in life happens when you love yourself first. Don't chase and expect. Totally. You know, the relationship that you have within yourself sets the standard for the quality of relationships that you will accept into your life, right? So if you are, uh, you, if you have that loving of yourself and meeting of your own needs and that clarity within, uh, then you're going to be repelled by people who aren't, at, who aren't doing that for themselves, right? Because you realize how scary it is to be in relationship with somebody who doesn't love themselves or can't meet their own needs because they're not actually in relationship with you. They're not actually able to really love you to the depths, right? Because they're just trying to get something from you to fulfill the needs that they're not meeting for themselves. So um, you end up really feeling repelled by a relationship dynamic with somebody who doesn't have a loving relationship with themselves at the point when you have been uh, getting yourself to a really loving place within. Not so much scary. It's more you can just you create space and boundaries with those people and you can have compassion for them because you know what it's like to be in their position. Um, but you end up, you know, setting a really high standard and being OK with not having that that person in your life. You don't need to settle in any relationship in your life because you're not trying to get anything from anybody else. You're fulfilling on those needs. And then what happens is you end up attracting um, and to that high standard of other people who meet their own needs so that you guys can actually overflow that love to one another rather than just be in there to try and get something needily and oftentimes very unconsciously, right? It's all part of our stages of development. So Love that, Jose. Don't chase and expect. Absolutely. And Tess is here as well. And Simone, awesome. And John and Kathleen and Grace and Cindy. Great. Thank you. I'm so grateful that this is of value to you, Cindy. Thanks for showing up. And Simone, I am from Melbourne, Australia. 
uh, coming right to you. So that's my message for you guys today. You expect from others what you do not give to yourself. I'm going to put out a post for you guys tomorrow with a bunch of questions that you can journal on so that you can ultimately make the most. Like you can apply what we're talking about today in your real life. So make sure you keep a lookout for that. I'll be posting that tomorrow for you guys. And I want to thank each and every one of you guys for showing up live today, for contributing to the conversation. Um, and like I said, if it's a value, please do share it. Oh, I also nearly forgot. Um, I do have that free guide that I created for you. Seven proven steps to maximize your self-belief. Um, if you go to www.vanessajanepatrick.com, it's right at the top of my website. Uh, you can get that free gift um, from me to you uh, to start your 2021 off on a really empowering high and a way to actually uh, change your patterns of behavior so that you're, instead of doubting yourself all of the time, you're transforming that into self-belief, right? And self-belief is the foundational piece to creating the kind of life that you'd actually be proud of all right and being the quality of human being that you have the potential of being all right and uh elps thank you so much as well so yeah go to my website for that i'll put a link um in the comments after this video um and thank you again and as usual my parting message to each and every one of you guys is to make sure that you are going out there and honoring your authenticity deepening your intimacy and contributing your gifts meaningfully and purposefully. That's it from me. Share it if it's of value and I will see you guys really soon. Much love.